Hey, Pretty Girl Club. Welcome to season two of the Dark Femininity series. If you have not watched season one of my Dark Femininity series, be sure to check that out. I also have a Dark Femininity course that is linked in all of the descriptions of my videos. If you're new here, welcome to the Exoticals United community. Um, this is the Dark Femininity series, so let me start this off by saying that if you are stuck up, if you are conceited, if you are a snob, if you think you're cute, welcome. This is the community for you. Here on the Dark Femininity side of the Exoticals United YouTube channel, we could care less what others think of us. In fact, we love to embrace all of our negative qualities. I myself am a proud snob. Yes, we are very bougie over here. And we're not changing it. And that leads me to the first point of Dark Femininity, which is embracing and even flaunting your negative qualities when necessary. Um, so I can start off by telling one of the things that I did. So you guys know that I have experienced the typical bullying that people do when they are like jealous. They could be jealous of things like your phenotype, maybe your background, maybe your fluid identity, or even like your appearance and how pretty you are. And so I know that for me, if people keep going out of their way to stereotype me and call me stuck up and snobby, then I'm going to literally start acting like that. I'm going to literally flip my hair in their face. I've actually done this before. Some of my friends have done this before as well, where when they were being bullied, their hair was like long and curly and these girls were bullying them and those girls happened to have like shorter hair. And those girls, they just flipped their hair in that girl's face and walked off. But I do want to say when it comes to all of these things, obviously do them at your own risk. But that is the first aspect of dark femininity that I like to use all the time. Um, I've also been called classist, which I feel is another form of being called a snob. But I've been called classist before, mainly by unambiguous black men because they, they feel like they don't have access to me because, you know, when it comes to dating and stuff like that, I talk about um, hypergamy and things like that on this YouTube channel. And so I will just embrace that title. Like, okay, if you think I'm classist, yeah, I guess I'm classist. I am a proud classist. I love to raise my socioeconomic status. That is one of my life goals. I will continue to do so. If you would like to stay in poverty, then by all means, do me a favor and do that. I would love that for you. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to remain a classist snob. Something else that people like to do in order to gaslight and project is they will make comments like, you think you're better. Well, depending on how far you want to go with dark femininity, I know that one thing that I will do is if I am actually better at something, like let's say I have better skills or I'm more talented in a certain area, I will admit to myself, well, I mean, she's really not wrong. Like I, I really do think that I'm better at creating YouTube videos and uh, creating talking points than she is. So I mean, technically she's not wrong. So once again, it's going back to embracing qualities about yourself that others try to shame you out of. Because if you guys are into spirituality, if you are into um, emotion wheels, I will put them up on the screen. Shame is actually the lowest emotion on the vibrational scale. So no human being is perfect. And I've noticed that what other people will do is they will try to make you feel shame for not being perfect. They want you to feel shame about your negative qualities. They want you to feel bad about that because they want you to be in a low emotional state. But the way that I kind of like alchemize that and turn it into something positive is by simply embracing that quality about myself. So yes, I can be snobby. Yes, I probably can come off as conceited or vain or um, rude, uh, thinking I'm better, showing a lack of empathy for people who this channel is not even intended for. Um, but guess what? This is my YouTube channel. I'm not changing it. Um, this is who I am. So if you can't handle my flaws, feel free to remove yourself from my life. I would actually love that. I would love that for you. But that is a form of dark femininity. You are digging into your darker qualities. You're digging into those things and utilizing those things to benefit you. So for example, with being a snob, um, this was something that I used to think was considered bad because I was raised very Christian. And so people would constantly talk about humility. But I noticed that the more humble I was, the more people started to treat me like a doormat. And I didn't like that. So I took back my snobby mindset. I took back my snob behavior 
And the way that I decided to turn it into something that works for myself is, yes, you're right. I don't want to be in spaces where I feel like it's kind of trashy or like beneath the type of lifestyle that I want to live for myself. So if that makes me snobby or classist, so be it. But I'm going to embrace that and I'm going to stay in classy spaces. I'm going to live in classy neighborhoods. I'm going to dress cute. And if that makes me into a snob, then so be it. Another thing that I've done when it comes to embracing negative things, um, some people try to criticize the Exoticals United community or they try to criticize women who embrace pretty privilege and then they'll say, oh, well, um, you're actually being male-centered by having pretty privilege. So you're you're hypocritical. Um, so if I'm hypocritical, then I embrace being a hypocrite. I am a proud hypocrite. Me embracing pretty privilege is me benefiting from the patriarchy that I happen to be born into. So if I happen to be born with certain privileges or being closer to those privileges and I find it to be a way that I can use my classism to become wealthier, well, I'm going to continue doing that and I'm going to be the biggest hypocrite that you've ever seen in your life. And who gon' jack me? This is dark femininity, baby. But that's what I mean, though, when I say dark femininity. I'm saying embracing your shadow self is what some people like to call it. Um, I like to just call it embracing the negative qualities about yourself because everyone has hypocrisy in their character. Everyone has uh, jealousy or all these random emotions and mindsets that may be considered negative to some people. But guess what? My self-love is never ending. So I'm going to choose to love every part of myself. I'm going to choose to nurture and care for and show grace towards every part of myself. So just because you are ashamed of your internalized classism or your snobby behaviors, just because you are ashamed of those things doesn't mean that I have to be ashamed of those things within myself. Trust me, I've been living in my own body my entire life. I have known every single one of my thoughts for my whole life. And so I am not ashamed or like going to allow others to put me in a position to where I can't utilize my negative qualities because what a lot of people don't realize is that negative qualities can actually help you to become better. You know how some people get angry and then they punch people and go to jail and then there are other people who get angry and then they start a business and become rich? So both people had the same emotion. They just utilized that energy from that emotion in a different way. And so dark femininity is about utilizing the energy that you get as fuel. So if people call you a snob, what they're really saying is you think you're cute or, you know, you think you deserve something better than what you should be getting. And it's like, well, you can't tell me what I do and don't deserve because you you don't rule my life. Another thing that I embrace about dark femininity is I am a proud social climber. I am a proud clout chaser. I love when people try to refute my talking points, whether it's via their YouTube channels or via Lipstick Alley or Reddit. I actually love that because I get to use my dark femininity. I get to screenshot everything. I get to listen to their recordings. Sometimes I will even play audios and react to it on this YouTube channel and make thousands of dollars because somebody else decided to talk about me. Other times, I will convert their subscribers to my subscribers. So you know how like you will pull up to a grocery store and then when you're in the parking lot, you turn around and you're like, wait, there's the competitive grocery store right there. Or like you go to a coffee shop, you go to a Starbucks, and then right next to it, there's like a Dunkin' Donuts or something. And you're like, wait, why are there two coffee shops right next to each other? Why are there two cafes in the same parking lot. Well, that's because those people are working based off of supply and demand. And the second coffee shop is set up there because they have already seen that, hey, there's a market here. So why don't I come in and steal some of your customers? Guess what, baby? This is the society I was born and raised in. A lot of people like to talk shit about the United States and about how capitalism is. And don't get me wrong. I think that those things are horrible. But you know what? I learned from the horrible system that I live in. And I learned how to benefit from it. So guess what? If you want to start a business, I can, I can start the same business if I want to. In fact, I can copy your business model and utilize it so that I can make money because you can't trademark everything. You can't copyright everything. So one of my ways that I use dark femininity is I do not allow others to monopolize things that I want to have a piece of. So if I want a piece of the pie, guess what? I'm going to come in and I'm going to get a piece of that pie. So if the colorism conversation is popular and I have lots of controversial things to say, then guess what? I'm going to come in and get a piece of that exotical tax. And this is also why I say that I want all of the other girls in the Pretty Girl Club 
to start their own YouTube channels. By the way, be sure to um, check out my community page because I like to share my fellow pretty girls on the community page because I want all of us to have a piece of the pie. So if you haven't started a YouTube channel already, please start a YouTube channel. Let's make the YouTube algorithm a little bit prettier. Let's make the algorithm a little bit more feminine and start our own YouTube channels. Because one thing that I've learned is like, if not you, then who? Like if you don't go and take that pedestal for yourself, if you don't go and get that money for yourself, or if you don't go and get what you want, somebody else is going to get that exact thing. Someone else is going to get that exact opportunity. A lot of people like to say like, oh, so-and-so only got that opportunity because they're white or because they're light-skinned or because they have privilege. But guess what, baby? That's another aspect of dark femininity, utilizing the privileges that you may have been born with. So you're telling me that if I have able body privilege, then I'm supposed to roll around in a wheelchair so that I can then be humble and like be relatable to people who are in wheelchairs? No, of course it's horrible that certain people are not able-bodied, but I'm not going to handicap myself because others happened to be born with certain handicaps. And by the way, if you're thinking I'm talking about race, that's your internalized inferiority complex talking. Because I say on this channel all the time, blackness is not a handicap, dark skin is not a handicap, 4C hair is not a handicap. But a part of my journey of embracing dark femininity is I am not giving up my pedestal for anyone else. So I have the right to build my pedestal. I have the right to utilize whatever privileges I have. I also have the right to privilege stack and build upon the privileges I was born with. So for example, if you were born in the suburbs, you are not required to go move to the hood so that you can like even the playing field with people in the hood. Like that doesn't make sense. People who complain about privilege are usually the people who do not have said privilege. And those same people who complain about not having that privilege would gladly trade places with you if they could. So the people who talk shit about wealth, those are the same people where if you were to give them a million dollars, they would gladly take it. They wouldn't say, oh, well, no, I'm not going to take this million dollars. I know I won the lottery, but like, I'm not going to take $50 million because there are more people who are poor than me. So like, I'll just be poor for the rest of my life so that I can show solidarity with people in poverty. No, that is a reverse psychology trick that people use on you because they are actually using a form of dark psychology on you. And that's called gaslighting. They're trying to gaslight you to stay at the bottom. They're trying to gaslight you out of your ambition. They're trying to gaslight you into being trashy by calling you snobby. They're trying to gaslight you into dating dusties by saying you're being classist. And so I've learned that um, I don't care if people think something negative about me because I can't control what people think anyway. So if me having snobby mindsets or if me saying something that sounds vain or conceited, if that turns you off, then you can stay turned off. Feel free to unsubscribe, although I know you will be lurking from the clouds, and I will gladly come in and siphon the subscribers off of your YouTube channel. Um, by the way, when it comes to using dark femininity in YouTube or if you have some sort of online business and for all the pretty girls who have their own YouTube channels, one of the ways that I love utilizing dark femininity on YouTube is I love allowing people's own words to destroy them. So I understand that people are probably going to try to use this tactic on me, but that's fine because all attention is good attention to me. I actually do not believe in the concept of negative attention. I know how to profit off of my attention, even if it is negative. But I have learned how to let other people destroy themselves because what people don't realize is that a fool will always self-destruct. Someone who lacks self-control, they will always self-destruct. And so if you have an opponent, like let's say you have a business rival or someone at your job who lacks emotional control, these are the people who yell and scream and throw things, just allow them to self-destruct. Let them become emotional. Let them cuss you out in the office. Let them throw things because all you're doing is allowing them to make a fool of themselves and then everybody's just going to look at them like, wow, this person is crazy. They're throwing things in the office. And then that person is likely to get written up or have people, you know, not supporting them socially. I have used that tactic so many times. A lot of us mixed race women and um, ambiguous black women have been utilizing the tactic of silence for about the past decade or so when it came to the colorism conversation. We allowed other women to come online and bash themselves. We didn't bash anybody. 
because we don't feel like we have to. Um, so we didn't spend our time saying so and so is ugly or like pulling up pictures of celebrities and talking about how ugly or mediocre they are. No, that's other women doing that. And those women are are ruining their own self perception. So when it comes to dealing with an opponent or a rival who is bad at regulating their emotions, oh, just just let them keep talking, let them keep making a fool of themselves. Or it's kind of like how in college or in high school, let's say you like a certain guy and your friend decides that she likes that guy and she wants to like get all of his attention. So she's being loud. She's being super abrasive and stuff. Let her do that. Just let her continuously get her attention or get whatever it is that she wants out of it. Because by remaining silent and knowing when to remain silent, you are actually putting yourself in the position of power because you're showing I have more emotional control than you. My pedestal is way higher than yours. And so I do not feel the need to come in and try to like, I don't know, siphon off your attention. And another thing that you can do is make power moves from behind the scenes. So for example, for the women who have multiple streams of income, um, a lot of the pretty girls here on YouTube, you guys have YouTube channels, you guys are doing acting, you guys are doing modeling. Some of you guys have your own brick and mortar businesses in real life. So that's an example of making power moves because you have multiple streams of income. A lot of women also use dark femininity when it comes to dating. They will have multiple streams of male validation. They will have a roster of guys they're talking to. So that way, if one guy messes up or something, they're not sitting at home heartbroken on a Friday night. They've got another date already lined up. By the way, be sure to um, join my membership page on YouTube if you want access to the Decentered Dating series. This channel covers all parts of the spectrum of decentering men, anywhere from decentered dating all the way to 4B. So I talk all about uh, decentering men, pretty much every nuance of that spectrum. So for any naysayers who think that my channel lacks nuance, half of those people, I will surpass them in the amount of content I create probably within the next year. Because that's another thing, by the way. That's another way to use dark femininity. It's by not just using pretty privilege, but also utilizing things that can't be stolen from you or that will never go away. My pretty privilege may fade. My face may wrinkle. My hair may turn gray. But guess what? My mind and my creativity and my output will always be there. Think about Beyonce and how a lot of people thought that she was just a pretty face when she first came into the industry. I am 32 years old, so I remember when Beyonce first came out and people were saying that she couldn't sing. They were actually saying that she could not sing or dance. People were comparing her to Aaliyah, and it's funny because Aaliyah actually gained a lot more popularity after she passed away. When she was alive, I remember people talking crap about Aaliyah. People were talking crap about Beyonce. Um, They were saying that like Beyonce is just relying on her pretty face basically and that she has nothing going for her. But Beyonce did not allow those people to tear her apart. She instead decided to utilize something that those other women competing against her didn't have. And that was her work ethic. I call it the Creole work ethic. It's where a lot of people, they want to diminish your power, but you know how to make power moves from behind the scenes to the point where you have longevity, you have uniqueness, you will continue to shine, and you will continue to be in that spotlight. The reason I'm calling it the Creole work ethic is because this is based on Beyonce, and from here on out, any negative stereotypes that people try to use against mixed women, light-skinned women, or ambiguous black women, I will then turn stereotypes into positive ones. That's right, I will be creating positive stereotypes about each and every one of us. And so, by the way, it's funny because my dad, he did the DNA test. He had a little bit of Creole on his uh, DNA thing. I'm pretty sure I have like little to no Creole, but maybe I inherited that Creole work ethic. Okay, dark femininity, baby. You may be able to talk your shit, but you cannot compete with the Creole work ethic. Beyonce has it. I must have it. And a lot of content creators in the Pretty Girl Club clearly have that. So that's another form of dark femininity, though. It is taking something negative that was said about your people group or ethnicity and turning it into a positive thing. So think about how unambiguous people, they took back the N-word and they said, no, you know what? Something that you guys tried to use to call us something negative, we're going to take back that word and make it a part of our culture and then make money off of it by creating music that uses that word. Now, some people think that's controversial. 
Um, that's not really important. What's important is taking back your power. Hence why I decided to use reverse psychology and take back the word exotical because a lot of people were, they were trying to make fun of me. This is back before I started this channel and they were trying to make fun of anyone who was not an unambiguous dark skinned monoracial black woman. So anybody who was not that, they would automatically throw you into this category called exotical. But the way that I utilized dark femininity was by not only taking back that word, not only creating names like Exoticals United or Exotical Tax. By the way, this was a spinoff of Cynthia G's term preference tax that a lot of people were using to uh, try to like make fun of us or whatever. And so I just took the phrase and guess what now we've got a whole community um a lot of us have youtube channels by the way congratulations to all of the content creators that have surpassed 500 subscribers you guys are blowing up but that's another example of dark femininity it is taking a name or taking a phrase that was used against you as something negative and then adding that into your brand it reminds me of how people used to call taylor swift a snake and then she started creating merch with like snakes on it. She started, she made that album reputation. So she knows how to profit off of negative things that people say about her. She knows how to take negative attention and turn it into money. Another family I can think of would obviously be like the Kardashian family. They are very good at using this side of dark femininity. So it's taking negative things that people say, it's taking the shit that people talk about you, and then turning it into your own brand or making it a part of your brand and wearing it as a badge of honor. So if you're a snob, if you're conceited, if you think you're cute, and if you acknowledge your privilege, whether it's pretty privilege, light skin privilege, hair texture privilege, feature privilege, whatever it may be, you are welcome here on this channel because we're not going to be shamed out of utilizing the things that we were given in this society. Uh, we can't help how we were born. No, we do not wish to give up our pedestals or our privileges. And by the way, I'm not even saying that others can't have a pedestal, but since others don't know how to create a pedestal for themselves, that is not our problem. So that's another aspect of dark femininity. Instead of wasting your time defending others or caping for others who wouldn't cape for you, you can spend that time building your own pedestal. And this is why um, the Decentering Men series on this channel is so important because a lot of the insecurities that women have come from men. It comes from being male-centered. So once you decenter the men, you can build your own pedestal. You don't have to wait for like a man to give you this pedestal or to somehow um, date you or something and that's the only way you feel pretty, you don't have to do that. But another way that I like to use dark femininity in my everyday life is to steal like an artist. Um, sometimes if I'm really feeling naughty, I will straight up steal marketing, branding, I will hop on trends or even discuss certain talking points that I see rival communities attempting to talk about. And I will do that because number one, not only is it going to siphon off some of their subscribers onto my channel, because if you guys haven't noticed, a lot of the channels that I tend to target on here, they tend to be much larger than me. So I have so much more to gain. I don't pay attention really to the super tiny channels at this time because I don't have as much to gain. But something that I like to do is I like to siphon off subscribers from larger channels and bring them over here. And I love seeing it in my comments section. Um, of course, I don't post the comments on my actual page for the public, but I love it when people contact me and they're like, oh yeah, I used to subscribe to this other person's channel and now I subscribe to your channel because you do a better job of talking about certain things. You go way more in depth. And by the way, that's another part of dark femininity. It's utilizing what makes you unique from your competitors. And this doesn't only apply to business. This can apply in the workplace. So I remember actually there was one time at work, I think I told part of the story before where um, the unambiguous or like monocultural African-Americans, they were trying to exclude me. Like they didn't want me to feel included. You know how people do that when they're like just haters or whatever. So I was like, okay, no worries. And I didn't say anything. I didn't try to beg or, you know, do that thing where I allow people to haze me. Because I've noticed a lot of people, when they view you as more privileged than them, it's almost as if they want to haze you or they want to make you suffer first before they offer you their friendship. So I don't play those games anymore. So at my job, um, I, I just ignored the, the people who didn't want to be my friend. And I became friends with all the non-black people in the office. I didn't realize it at the time. 
but it turns out the non-black people in the office, they had like kind of higher positions. They were like executive directors and like managers and stuff like that. I didn't realize I was doing that. I only did it because the other people were like leaving me out. And then it's funny because the same people that excluded me before, then they came back saying, oh, well, you guys only want to hang out with each other, kind of the higher up people. You guys treat us like we're pawns. And I was thinking, oh, wow, that's interesting how you wanted me to get out of your space. And then when I get out of your space and create my own and social climb and do it better than you and show you how it's done, now suddenly it's, well, what are you talking about? Like, uh, we're all just one big family. And I've noticed the same thing happening here on YouTube where we've got multiple content creators at this point who create uh, content for dark skin, unambiguous black women. We've got multiple creators talking about how they're no longer going to make colorism content. They're hiding their colorism content. They have completely switched into celebrity T channels at this point or, or just commenting on um, celebrity stuff Side note, has anyone noticed how a lot of celebrity commentary channels, they comment mainly on exotical celebrities? And and I like when they do that. I love seeing other people residually build my image in Hollywood. I love seeing that. So uh, like I said, I had no idea who Mariah the Scientist was. I didn't know who I Spice was. Um, I was not nearly as interested in Tyla. I didn't really have an opinion on Tyla. I had never like looked her up or anything until a lot of these people started like commenting on these celebrities and stuff. So I actually, I encourage that. I hope they continue doing that because that actually helps us. And it's funny because staying on par with trends and stuff, that is actually a way that you can utilize dark femininity. So you know how people argue and they say, oh, um, I'm mad at the beauty standards because like they keep getting higher and higher. Like 30 years ago, you didn't have to wear as much makeup or, you know, you didn't have to do as much work and you were still considered pretty. Or like before TVs existed, you didn't have to be as pretty. Before cameras existed, you didn't have to be as pretty. Those types of people, they will always be at the bottom. They'll always be behind. So one of the ways that I utilize um, dark femininity is instead of complaining that times are changing, I like to stay on top of it. I like to stay on top of anything I'm interested in. I always like to be at the cutting edge, whether it's my personal internal beauty standard, whether that's technology. Um, I embrace change because I understand that changing and evolving and growing and having the ability to be flexible, that is a very powerful tool that can be used to act as like a springboard to take me higher. Um, another thing that I've used as far as dark femininity is I like to use controversy to my advantage. So I must have got that quality from the black Latinas because they seem to know how to use controversy to their advantage. Two women who come to mind are Cardi B and one of my faves, the one, the only, Shira Seven, who is African American and Puerto Rican. So these exoticals, I don't know if I just took after them, but um, these women right here, they sure are good at pissing people off and getting paid off of it. They know how to piss people off. They know how to use controversy to their advantage. They know how to get paid off of it. They know how to keep people talking without them even having to pay attention to other people. They're just living their lives and just doing whatever the fuck they want. So um, I guess we must have inherited some of that energy over here because that is one of the main things that has helped to grow not just this YouTube channel, but also our community in general as exoticals, as MLS women, as ambiguous black women. That has really helped us to grow. It's not being afraid of controversy. It's embracing controversy. Think of one person who is successful who, who did not cause controversy. Elon Musk, he caused controversy. Steve Jobs, controversial. Martin Luther King was controversial. Any person that has created a large amount of success for themselves, any person that has acted as a pioneer has utilized controversy to their advantage. Think about, I'm thinking of the Kardashians again, they used controversy to their advantage. They utilized their bad and sketchy past to create this whole entire influencer culture or to help bring it to the next level. So that's what I consider this YouTube channel to be doing. I don't consider myself to be the first person that's ever talked about light skinned issues or pretty privilege, but I will say I happen to be an ENTJ in terms of personality. And so I have an abrasive confidence sometimes or an abrasive boldness, but that is actually another quality that I consider to be a part of dark femininity because 
something that people used to tell me in the past in a negative way, they would say, you're bold. They would say, you're so bold. You're so arrogant. You're this, you're that. And I used to be thinking, well, how am I bold and arrogant? Is it because I'm just speaking up for what I believe in? So I've noticed that in our society, people like to call you arrogant or they call you bold in a negative way if you are very vocal about speaking out when it comes to the things that are important to you. And so at, at one point, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to embrace this quality because clearly other people don't seem to have it and it seems to shock people. So I'm going to use that shock factor to my own advantage. And so that's part of how this YouTube channel started. Lots of other people have utilized that. All of the people I just named, Elon Musk, Martin Luther King, this goes across racial lines. Anybody can use these qualities to social climb and to get their voice heard and to become classist and basically gain wealth or whatever. If you think gaining wealth is classist, then that's fine. I'll be classist. I don't have to spend the rest of my life in poverty in order to prove that I support poor people. But going back to the talking point of stealing like an artist, one thing I like to do on YouTube if I'm really feeling naughty is if a content creator ticks me off, I will straight up purchase their courses, purchase their membership, look at their color schemes, look at all of their graphics, look at the talking points or the things that they are speaking about, and I will utilize those exact same methods, but do it better on my channel if I want to. So this is something that I actually learned um, because of my background. So you guys know that I did not come from the African American community in terms of like how I was raised. I was raised in a very suburban, very waspy background. When I say wasp, I mean white Anglo-Saxon uh, Protestant. So the background that I come from is filled with people who have almost like this cutthroat business mindset to where it's like, you know how to steal like an artist and do it legally or do it in a way that benefits you. And then people get pissed because they're like, oh, dang it, you're doing it better than me. It reminds me of how people say, oh, so-and-so is blackfishing. You know, Kim Kardashian is blackfishing. Ariana Grande is blackfishing. Tyla is blackfishing. They say everybody's blackfishing. And in reality, I actually think they're mixed fishing, but that's not what this video is about. Um, but even if they are, who go and check them? Seriously, who's going to check them? Because last time I checked... Um, they're still making music, they're still rich, they're still receiving likes and praise. People are just mad because they represented African culture or they represented a, a part of African culture or mixed race culture better than and on a bigger scale than people from those communities themselves. Now, am I saying that this is a good thing? Of course not. It's horrible. We live in a horrible society with horrible things happening every single day. But I'm not going to spend the rest of my life at the bottom of said society in order to prove that I am somehow more righteous than those who are using dark femininity to their advantage. So if you want to spend your life in fear of black fishing or white fishing or, you know, showing love to other cultures or you don't want to do anything that could make you relate to other cultures or you don't want to like do something because some someone else has done it before, that's on you. But the mindset that I have is there's nothing new under the sun. And the way that art works and the way that creativity works is you are taking ideas that you've already been exposed to. So whether it's music, whether it's certain color schemes or certain marketing, you're taking ideas that you've already been exposed to yourself and you are repackaging them in your own unique way. And you are, you know, creating your own unique business off of that. That would be like if Starbucks got mad at Dunkin' Donuts and then they're like, oh no, we're the ones who sell coffee. It's like, you, you can't monopolize coffee in and of itself. Other people can create coffee shops if they want. Other people can wear a curly hairstyle if they want. Other people can have a certain look if that's what they want. If they want to tan their skin, they can tan their skin. It's not illegal. As long as what you're doing is not illegal or you are not actively trying to hurt others, then I don't see a problem with it. And you know what? Even if people choose to be offended by it, you can be offended all you want. And so the way that I like to utilize this quality here on YouTube is I love following content creators who have rival talking points against mixed race women or against light skinned women or against exoticals, or it doesn't even have to be someone that like rivals this community. It could also be just someone who is a different YouTube channel, or they're just talking about a trending topic like decentering men or like 4B movement. I love adding in my two cents because Nobody is going to do it like me. So that's another part of dark femininity actually is embracing your own uniqueness and understanding that 
even if I do make a video about 4B, my video about the 4B movement is going to be its own unique video that like, you know, it has my editing style or my color scheme or my play on words. And that is what makes it different. That's what makes it unique. Just because someone may be discussing similar talking points or maybe they dress a certain way or maybe you think they're copying or something, that doesn't mean that that person is going to stop. People have been copying exoticals for the longest time. People copy our style. Like if you have pretty privilege, people are going to copy you. They're going to copy your hairstyle. They're going to copy your nails. They're going to copy your clothes. So it's like people do this to each other all the time. And sometimes people... They are not necessarily trying to copy on a conscious level. Sometimes people are being influenced by, by the trends. So it's like, if you're a trendsetter, just embrace being a trendsetter and be grateful for being a trendsetter. Like for me, if other YouTube channels in this niche, if they become bigger than me or whatever, I wouldn't get mad. I would just embrace the fact that, hey, I helped pioneer this. And, you know, hopefully these people down the line, hopefully they remember me. But even if they don't, if I have to pivot and go to something else, then I'm willing to do that if necessary. So I'm not I'm not afraid of like, you know how people say, oh, this person doesn't want to give up the crown or like, you know how celebrities will start beefing like the female rappers and stuff. They'll start beefing because one of them will be like, oh no, I have the crown. And then the other person's like, oh no, I want the crown. I don't really have that mindset because I have a mindset of abundance. I know that I am special and I know that there's always going to be a special market for me because nobody can do it like me. And so I'm talking about this because I want you guys here in the Pretty Girl Club to recognize what makes you special and unique. Oh, and another thing that I forgot to mention, for those who try to say, oh, um, these people make being mixed their personality or they make being light skinned their personality. They make having curly hair their personality. They make having light eyes their personality. And it's like, yes, and who gonna check me? My mother, my father, my family members, all of the ancestors and people groups that came together to make me, all of these wonderful people of color or all of these wonderful indigenous people or African people or European people that came together to create me, those people are special to me. And I will always love the cultures that I came from. I will always love the people that I came from. And yes, it is absolutely a part of my personality and I am proud of it and I'm not changing it. And I will continue to practice radical self-love, which means that I love every part of myself. I love every people group that came together to create me. I even know how to show respect to cultures that are not a part of my background. I don't walk up to a Chinese person talking about Chinese medicine and then I say, you're making being Chinese your whole personality. No, I don't say that because if that is their whole personality or a part of their personality or they love that aspect of themselves, they are free to do that. I don't get offended if other people are practicing self-love, but that's one of my methods of, of dark femininity is practicing radical, relentless, unapologetic self-love. So guess what? I love my positive qualities. I love my negative qualities because I know when to use them. I love the negative aspects of my past. I love the mistakes that I've made and the things that I've learned from them. I love my skin tone, my hair texture, my, every part of myself, even if I choose to change it. Even if I woke up tomorrow and got a plastic surgery and had a whole new lip, a set of lips, or got some fillers, or got a nose job or something, guess what? I would love my plastic nose. Um, if I got fake hair, if I have like a wig on or something, I love my wig that I'm wearing, and I also love the hair underneath it. So guess what? I'm never going to apologize for any of those things. I'll never apologize for my upward mobility. I am a proud clout chaser. I'm a proud social climber. And I know how to give myself grace when I need it. I've noticed that a lot of times other people who don't give you grace, they don't want to give you grace because they don't give grace to themselves. So these are the people who they point out if you have one piece of frizz on your hair, they'll be like, oh, that one hair on the left side. Oh yeah, it's a little bit frizzy. Or they'll try to like point out imperfections in hopes that you will somehow start scrutinizing yourself. And it's like, okay, if I have frizz in my hair, then it's going to be frizzy. And I'm going to look like a baddie with my frizzy head ass. And I'm going to get what I want in life with my frizzy head ass. And I am going to put on makeup with my light skin forehead. And I am going to look beautiful on Instagram with my eyes that are too far apart, according to you. You know what I mean? So it's like embracing things that other people might try to point out as flaws and still not giving a fuck and still saying, who gonna check me?
Because I've noticed that guys will do this as well, like in terms of dating, they'll try to be like, well, you're not submissive or, you know, you, you always want to argue with me. And it's like, okay, so are, are we breaking up? Yes or no? Do you want me? Yes or no? Do you want me to be here? Yes or no? I no longer allow other people to try to like bully me into changing. I've learned how to embrace the positive aspects of myself and the negative aspects of myself because one thing that those people don't realize, the people who try to shame your negative qualities and stuff, um, I can't force myself to instantly become a different person. And also, no matter how much I'm working on myself, I'm never going to be perfect. No human being is ever going to have perfect confidence, uh, be super loving and nice 24-7. And also, for the people who try to say, like, we're mean girls, or, like, I've noticed that sometimes people like to stereotype pretty women, and they try to say, like, you're a mean girl. And it's like, okay, am I supposed to be sad now? It's like, I'd rather be a mean girl than a nice girl. I mean, if I had to choose, I would rather be called a mean girl than be called a nice girl. Because when I think of a mean girl, mean girls know how to get what they want. Mean girls are bold. Mean girls are aggressive when they need to be. Mean girls stand up for themselves. So it's like, if you think calling us mean girls or calling pretty women mean girls, if you think that's going to make them, I don't know, stop being that way, it's not going to. That's that's no different than me calling a guy an a-hole and then thinking that he's suddenly going to turn into Gandhi after that. Like he's suddenly going to turn into Jesus Christ because I called him an a-hole. So a lot of people, they don't realize it, but on a subconscious level, they think that by calling you names and like speaking against you, that it's going to get you to suddenly change your character. And it will for some people who are weak-minded. Yeah, people who are weak-minded and have no identity of their own. Yeah, they will change with the wind and kind of just like follow everybody and be kind of wandering through life. But that's not what dark femininity is about. Dark femininity is about forging your own path at all costs. It's about chopping down as many trees that are in the way of you forging your path as possible. It's about fighting any animals along the way that try to come and attack you on that path. And it's about getting to the top of the mountain at the end. That is what I mean when I talk about things like dark femininity on this channel. Um, so from here on out, I will continue to keep all of the negative stereotypes about us, but I'm going to turn them into something positive. So some of the stereotypes about exoticals that I love is that we know how to get our bags. Um, even when people make fun of us for like dating unambiguous black men, um, I personally don't, but some of you guys might. So even when people make fun of it and they'll be like, oh, so-and-so got pregnant by this rapper or whatever, ha 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 ha. But it's like, okay, she, she's rich now, guys. Like even, even if they did break up, like she is now going to be rich. So I don't mind using terms like exotical tax. I don't mind being called a snob or conceited or vain. Like I'm going to embrace those things in a positive way and I'm going to flip those into something positive because I'd rather be seen as conceited than be seen as some sort of like femcel type of person or some sort of like invisible girl or something. So it's like, that's fine. I mean, if you're calling someone conceited or you're saying, you know, these women think they're better or they think they're superior, I actually, I don't care about that. Like if you think I'm superior, wow, I'm flattered. Um, I'm flattered that you care enough about me or you care enough about my mindset to like say that. But yeah, that's a part of dark femininity for me. It's embracing all the qualities about yourself, whether they're positive, whether they're negative, and it's about turning those negative ones into positive ones and just embracing it. Like, okay, yeah, you know what? I am bougie. I am pretty bougie. I mean, I like being in nice neighborhoods, drinking nice cups of coffee. You know, I'm, I'm very bougie. So if that's what people want to call me or if that's what people want to call our phenotypes, okay, that's fine. Or when people say, you think you're better. Well, let's be honest. There is a such thing as you having better skills than somebody else or you being better at something than someone else. Beyonce is better at singing than Kelly. Beyonce is better at being a celebrity than Kelly. Beyonce is better at keeping her mouth shut than Kelly. Beyonce is better at using her musical skills to appeal to a mass audience than Kelly. Beyonce is better at being more resilient than Kelly. So if you think that all of those things mean Beyonce thinks she's better, okay, well then so be it, because technically she is better in certain ways. There is a such thing as some people having more skills in a particular area than others. And so one of the ways that I embrace dark femininity is yes, I will say to myself, well, 
you know, I am better at being consistent on my workouts than Sarah. And I noticed that Sarah is like talking shit about my body or whatever. But it's like, well, technically, I've, I've been doing a better job than you have when it comes to my workouts. That's a part of dark femininity. It's being brutally honest with yourself. And this is not even about like, oh, you have to tell the other person that or you have to like say this out loud to the, to the other person. But no, you do have to admit to yourself when you are very good at something. Because something that actually used to hold me back was I would never admit to myself if I was very good at something. I actually, I used to not admit to myself when I had very good skills at a particular thing. And that was because people would say like, oh, that's, you know, that's not being humble. That is you thinking you're better. Like when people use the term think you're better, that's what I would usually think of is like, oh, you're right. I guess people shouldn't think that they're better at something or that they look better or that their body looks better or that they are more in shape. But it's like, no, if you are objectively more in shape or if you technically feel like you are more in shape or like you are a better singer or you have had a better career, it is okay to admit that to yourself because there's actually something very powerful and something very healing about admitting to yourself the areas where you excel. The term excel, like excelling at something, this means that you are excelling past others. It means you are surpassing others in that particular thing. When you go to a job interview, do you think you're the worst candidate for the job? Or are you going to the interview and then the second interview and then the third interview because you think you are the best candidate for the job? It's like, what kind of mindset do you want me to have? Do you want me to just think I'm the worst and that everybody else is better than me? Or do you just want people to think, oh, I'm just average at best. Everybody else is the exact same level. And that's disingenuous. Equality and everybody having equity and everyone being on the exact same level, that's not real. That's false. And you should know that. Like, people of color, we should know that more than anything else. So even though people will say, oh, everybody's equal, everyone's starting off on an equal playing field, you know, like, all that stuff is from the past, like racism and all these things that hold people back on a subconscious level, um, those things don't exist. Privileges don't exist. No, we know that that's false. We know that there are certain areas where others will be better than us. It could be when it comes to a job or something, like, hey, I know that so-and-so is a better candidate for the promotion. That is also a part of dark femininity as well. It's being able to admit to yourself when you are better than someone else at a particular thing or also when they are better than you. And then what you can do, like what I have done, let's say somebody else is better than me at something and I just, I'm not good at it. So for example, actually, um, with like, I've tried doing long distance hiking and like, stuff like that, and other people were better than me at doing those things. So I was honest with myself and said, hey, other people are better than me at this, or you know, this is just not my strength. I can still do it for fun, but as far as what I'm gonna invest most of my time in, I would rather invest the most time in the things where I excel. And it's okay to admit to yourself if you are the one who is excelling in that area. I am better at explaining the nuances of different concepts than a lot of other content creators. That's facts. I'm not trying to be cocky or arrogant. That is something that I don't have a problem with admitting to myself. I don't know of any other content creators in the black women empowerment space that can sit and talk about the exact same concept and all the nuances of it for an hour and 30 minutes straight and do it daily. I don't know of anybody else that can do that. So same thing goes with like, Let's use Beyonce as an example again. Beyonce, it would be okay for her to admit to herself, hey, vocally, like technically, on a vocal scale, I am better than most pop stars out today. I am a better performer than most people out today. It's okay for her to admit that to herself. So if that means that Beyonce has a superiority complex, well then so be it. Because at that point, you're simply calling confidence and truth a superiority complex. If Steve Jobs were to admit to himself, I am better at creating like high tech phones than these other companies. Does he have a superiority complex? As if that's a superiority complex, then I want one. Because I've noticed that whatever people call superiority complexes, usually they're just talking about somebody who has found their path in life, somebody who has found their niche. So I've noticed a lot of people have smoked for Beyonce. Beyonce found her niche, she found her path, and that was creating music and now she's like expanding in that and like digging deep into that area where she excels. Ice Spice is good at knowing how to go viral, knowing how to make funny raps or whatever. Um, she's good at showing off her uniqueness with the red hair. Nobody else did that. No other rappers were out here like with that exact same 
orange curly hairstyle, the short like mushroom haircut thing. So she was utilizing her skills that she was good at. And she knew within herself, this is the area where I excel. I may not excel lyrically. I may not excel in terms of like production of my beats and stuff, but I can excel in these other areas. And I know that I have a nice body shape or I know that a lot of men are attracted to my phenotype. And so I'm going to utilize that attention and that hyper visibility to bring visibility to my passion, which is rapping and making music about farting. So that is my definition of dark femininity. It's about playing the game of life and really treating it like it's a game because it really is at the end of the day. A lot of stuff that people take so seriously in this life are really just like a joke. But a part of dark femininity and admitting the areas where you shine or the areas where you excel, that's just a part of knowing your worth. Because even if you look up the definition of the word superior, it just means higher in rank, status, or quality. That's actually the number one definition of superior. Then it says the second definition is having or showing an overly high opinion of oneself. But seriously, even if you have an overly high opinion of yourself, as long as you have the shit to back it up, then you're fine. Like if Beyonce wants to call herself the queen, like when she made that song, Bow Down Bitches, she made that song because she has a quote unquote overly high opinion of herself. She called herself the queen over like other pop stars and stuff like that. So are people going to say you have a superiority complex, Beyonce? Well, technically she really doesn't. It's not like she's putting down others. I mean, she's really stating a fact. If she views herself as a queen or if she feels like her music or her talent or her work ethic is superior to the other artists in her field, well, guess what? you're not going to be able to change her mind because she was already bold enough about that to admit it in a song. She's got that Creole work ethic. She knows how to be a badass and climb her way to the top, and she's proud of it. So a part of dark femininity for me, it is about not being afraid to admit to myself the areas where I excel or the areas where I feel like my stuff is superior. I do believe that the content in our niche over here in the exotical sphere, like all the pretty girl club members that are making YouTube channels, I believe that the content over here is superior to a lot of the content that you see in black women empowerment spaces. And when I say I believe that our content is superior, I'm talking about the the amount of empowerment that you will face on this channel or that you will experience on this channel or on any of these girls channels. I'm talking about um, the increase that you will have in your confidence. I'm talking about the amount of boldness you will have from listening to this type of content. I'm talking about how the more you listen to this content, the more you will stop giving so many fucks about other people who wouldn't cape for you. So yes, I do believe that the quality of the content over in this side of YouTube is absolutely superior to the so-called empowerment content that you see in mainstream black empowerment spaces. I believe that that content is superior. That is my belief. The content is better. It's it's more well explained. It's not focusing on victimhood. It's actually focusing on um, things that you can use in your everyday life. I know that like even here on my channel, I like you guys to ask yourself questions. Like I'll ask you questions throughout the video. I'll be like, hey, what are some areas in your life where you've tried to repress parts of yourself because you felt like those were not good qualities? So that's that's a question that I'm asking you guys as you're watching this, like what qualities have you um, used in your past that have helped you, but then other people try to shame you for it. So for example, with me, it's been boldness. Like people would say, oh, you're bold in a bad way. But I feel like boldness is actually a very good quality. Even when people say like, oh, you're arrogant. Like I've been called arrogant before, but it's like they said Martin Luther King was arrogant. They said Steve Jobs was arrogant. They said Elon Musk was arrogant. They say they say that Beyonce is arrogant. Damn near every person that has done anything in this life has been called arrogant. They said Barack Obama was arrogant. And the reason people are calling them arrogant is because they have this mindset of how dare you think you could be the president? How dare you think that you could be the most successful artist in the music industry and win and be the most decorated artist of all time? Greater than Michael Jackson, more than Whitney Houston, more than Mariah Carey. How dare you think that? That's arrogant. So a lot of people use this term arrogant to gaslight you into thinking smaller. They want you to stay in the box that they put you in so that they can then step on you 
as they get to the top. They want you to stay at the bottom or they want to reverse, they want to switch positions with you. They want you to be at, at the bottom and then they want to switch places to where now they have a pedestal and they feel like they're above you. That is basic reverse psychology. And so a part of my dark femininity is I don't have a problem admitting areas where I excel. Like if I can admit to myself, hey, I, I believe that if I were to create a YouTube channel, that my content would be stronger than a lot of the content that you see my opponents creating. That There's nothing wrong with that. If that means that it's having a superiority complex, then I fully embrace that part of myself. Um, like I said, nobody's perfect. So if that's my flaw, I mean, I'd rather have my flaw be that I have a superiority complex than my flaw be that I have an inferiority complex. Like if I had to pick a flaw, I would gladly have a superiority complex as opposed to an inferiority complex. Just saying. And also the way that I can flip an inferiority complex, because I've done that before as well. I've actually had an inferiority complex before and I've been able to get rid of it basically. So the way that I can do that is by admitting so-and-so person is superior to me in this particular area. And then I learn from that person and then I use those same skills to gain success for myself. For example, every single black woman empowerment content creator whether their channel is still on YouTube or not, they are all superior to me in terms of their subscriber numbers. Their subscriber numbers are bigger than mine. They have been on YouTube longer than me. So their subscriber count is superior to mine. Their view counts are superior to mine. Their longevity is superior to mine. I don't have a problem being objective with where I'm at. So the way that I would flip it is instead of me feeling inferior, no, I look at those content creators and I learn from them. Okay, so-and-so stayed on YouTube for like 15 years or 10 years or five years and they just kept making videos. Okay, so since they gained popularity by being consistent, let me steal that quality for myself. Remember, I just talked about stealing like an artist. Let me steal like an artist, take that consistency that they have, utilize it for myself and do it better than them. So they only upload once a week, once a month. How about I upload every single day? And then it's not going to take me 10 and 15 and 20 years. It's not going to take me decades to get 10K subscribers or 100K subscribers. So I can steal like an artist. I can steal the qualities, the positive qualities that I see in them and the positive qualities that they utilize to get to where they're at. And then I can take those for myself. Or I can say, these people are talking about, you know, this trending topic. They're talking about colorism. They're talking about featureism. They're talking about whatever. And let me jump on this and talk about this because I know how to speak about it in a superior way when it comes to my explanation. That is my strength. That is my background. I have a background in writing, journalism, psychology, sociology. None of these people, they probably don't have that same background. So I know how to mix your qualities that I've stolen um, your consistency that I've stolen like an artist. I know how to mix that with my unique qualities to create something totally different and to create a totally different space that is all for myself. That is true dark femininity. So I'm actually thinking about I Spice. Like when people say she's not good, she doesn't deserve to be where she is. Well, I beg to differ because I Spice, she knew how to utilize some of the same qualities that former rappers had which was like maybe going viral and stuff. So she utilized that and then she mixed it in with her unique qualities, such as her hairstyle or, you know, like making funny songs and stuff. And then she utilized that to create her own lane for herself. And that's another thing. Not everyone's competing for the same thing. Who says that I Spice came into the industry wanting to be the best rapper or the best lyricist? She probably didn't even come in with those intentions. Same thing with Sweetie. I see people making that same criticism about Sweetie. Like, she's she's not as good of a songwriter as, like, Nicki Minaj. And it's like, well, she most likely is not competing for the title of best songwriter. So for a lot of people that will criticize you, they don't even know what it is you're going after. So this is why I tend to not take criticism that seriously. Although I will say one form of dark femininity I like to use is if someone does criticize me, so actually a lot of pretty girls do this, I've noticed. Let's say somebody criticizes your hair, your outfit, your makeup, it doesn't match your skin tone or you know your outfit doesn't fit right. And let's say that person was actually correct in what they said. What I've learned is thank you. Like in the past, when people would criticize certain things about me, 
even though I wouldn't say it out loud, I would actually think about that. And if they were right, I would be like, you know what, I, I do need to update my wardrobe. And then I would be like, thank you. Like that person is actually helping me to level up because they're telling me different keys to success. Like I remember one time somebody, um, they tried to make fun of my clothes or whatever, like in college, because I really didn't have that many clothes. And they were trying to say that I was usually wearing the color black because I don't know, I just, it was just by chance, I guess. And then I thought about it. I was like, well, you know, she is right. Like I do have a lot of black clothes. Let me go down to the mall and just see what they have on sale because that's actually a good point. I, I do need to upgrade my wardrobe. So instead of me getting mad and being combative or whatever, I just, I just let her think that she got me or I let her think that she dissed me. And then I remember going and I had a whole new wardrobe and I looked so cute. And I felt like such a badass, like walking around in my brand new outfits and basically utilizing criticism to help me level up. It actually reminds me of, I'm actually thinking of Beyonce again, um, because like I said, when I was a kid, she was, she couldn't sing, or at least that was how she was known. She was known as the girl who couldn't sing. And I remember guys used to call her stiff back, or they would say she had a stiff back, like when she dances, they used to say she was not that good of a dancer. I also remember when uh, Dream Girls came out, a lot of people were excited about Jennifer Hudson because she was the one who was on American Idol. She was like this incredible singer. They were not checking for Beyonce, or at least in my hometown, I guess. People were not checking for Beyonce as much as now. And I remember Beyonce um, with her being on the set of Dream Girls, like there were rumors, this is back when like magazines were a thing. <laughs> so I remember there were rumors and stuff where they said that Beyonce was rivals with Jennifer Hudson because Jennifer Hudson was seen as the standout star vocally. And I remember Beyonce, like from my perspective, she went in and she killed it. She did that song, Listen, and she killed it with that song. And I remember when we first heard that song, I remember one of the people in my family saying, with this song, she is actually proving that she can sing. And I remember after that song, Listen, came out, I had never again heard anybody say that Beyonce was a mediocre singer. So if I already knew those criticisms about Beyonce as just a fan, I'm sure Beyonce herself probably heard those types of criticisms in the industry. Hey, you're not as good of a singer as so-and-so. You're not as great as this other person. But instead of just like giving up, she utilized dark femininity and said, you know what? I'm just going to go behind the scenes. I'm going to practice more than Jennifer Hudson. I'm going to practice more than all these other people. I'm going to stay in voice lessons for 50 years and I'm just going to keep on making my vocal ability stronger and stronger. And then even though Jennifer Hudson may be a better singer right now, 10 years from now, she won't be. And so that's what I'm saying when I say dark femininity. So instead of letting the haters get you down, you can look at it objectively and say, well, are they correct about anything? And then if you decide that they are, you can utilize that to help yourself level up. That's actually a form of transmutation. That's something that a lot of kind of the new age spiritual people talk about. Transmutation is like when you take something that was one way and then you transmute it into something else. So instead of just absorbing all of these negative criticisms and kind of absorbing this negative energy and giving up, think about Lizzo versus Beyonce. I think Lizzo, she did not quit music. She just said that she was going to. But it's like, what if Beyonce would have said, I'm tired of people saying I can't sing, like, F it, I'm quitting music. And, and then she would have just quit. But she didn't. She decided to transmute that and say, you know what? I'm going to use these haters as my fuel. So that's why even on YouTube, I love it when people take subliminal shots at me or when they like make YouTube videos or they try to tag me and like talk shit or whatever. I love it when you guys email me screenshots of like things other content creators have said or things that I never would have seen. I love that because I can transmute that into money for myself. All I have to do is create more content. I get more content that I get to create now. I get to use my creativity even more. And by the way, creativity is a muscle. That's how I like to think of creativity. The more you use it, the better you become at it. The more you practice it, the stronger you'll become at it. So anytime someone tries to speak against myself or speak against this community, I love to hear about it and respond to it because I can respond for hours. The average person that is critiquing you, they're not going to spend two hours critiquing you, but I can spend two hours responding if I want to. And so that's what I mean when I say dark femininity. It's about finding the areas in your life where you have the superior skills. 
So like if you're good at working out, then continue working out. If you are good at writing, then keep writing and outwrite everybody in your niche. Like write more blogs than everybody in your niche. Write more books than everyone in your niche. And then you're basically unstoppable at that point because nobody can match your output. One really powerful thing that I've learned is that nobody else is going to work as hard for me as I can. So one thing that I learned when it came to jobs was like I was wasting a lot of time and energy working really hard for these jobs, staying early or coming in early, staying late and stuff. And then I'm not I'm not receiving an increase in pay. And so at some point I decided, okay, I should be spending my most energy on working on myself, whether that's working out, whether it's journaling or doing self-care, whether it's thinking and reflecting and being introspective. Even when I do this YouTube channel, this YouTube channel is designed to be very introspective. It's supposed to get you to think about yourself. It's supposed to get you to look inside of yourself and say, hey, what areas in my life do I excel in? And by the way, there is no wrong answer. So you don't have to let people guilt you into being apologetic. If you excel at pretty privilege, guess what? That's how you were born. For those of you who believe in God, that's how God made you. God knew that we would be living in the society we live in today. So it's like if you excel at a certain thing or let's say you live in a really great geographical location when it comes to like the business you want to do or your goals, you get to utilize that to your strength. But another part of dark femininity that I like to use is magnetism. So the way that I make myself more magnetic is actually by being more controversial. The more controversial you are, the more unapologetic you are, the more magnetic you're going to be. So I know that a lot of people hate Donald Trump. A lot of people actually hated Martin Luther King. They were very controversial, but they also became magnetic to the people who think like them or the people who kind of vibe with them. So the same can be said for any very successful celebrity, any company, like I think of I think of Starbucks or Disney or like all of these companies that are considered kind of iconic, I guess. It's because even though they're very controversial, they have certain aspects of themselves that makes them magnetic. One marketing trick that I actually learned from working at Starbucks was that Starbucks, their success partially came from creating a new language when it came to their product. Grande, tall, venti, um, they were like frappuccino. They were creating all these new phrases and terms or they were like combining different words when it came to the items on their menu. And then if you were a Starbucks fan or a person that likes shopping at Starbucks and getting your coffee from there, you had kind of like this inside bond with other people who would shop at Starbucks because when you said, I want to, I'm going to drink my venti vanilla skinny latte, then other people who also like Starbucks, you would be able to bond with them immediately because anyone outside of Starbucks doesn't understand that language. So I actually learned that marketing tip when I was in college. That was a remarkable thing that I learned from just working at Starbucks. And I was like, wow, if I ever market something, I'm going to use my own words, make up new words, make up new phrases, and create a language around what I'm saying so that Not only is it something that makes me special and stand out, but also if anyone else uses it, you know exactly where they got it from. And the people who are fans of that community or they like the product, they will be able to bond with each other by using those inside terms. It's almost like an inside joke or something or like creating your own language. So that's actually where I got the marketing um, strategy for this YouTube channel. It was from learning when I was in college, just learning from working at Starbucks. And so I do that all the time on this channel. I make up new words all the time. I make up new phrases all the time. I love that we create our own slang terms that no other communities have. You know, we take words that other people used against us and then we take them back. That is how you build a community. That's also how you can market, you know, if you wanna market yourself or you wanna market a certain product or you wanna start a business, that's something that you can do and I love like with the other exotical content creators, I love how they all have these really cute, very um, unique names and their names describe what their brand is gonna be. Their name will give you a hint or give you a clue into what their brand is. This is also why I'm very big on naming your own skin tone, not allowing others to name it. You create your own skin tone nickname because I know the importance of names. I know the importance of language. 
And so when you give yourself nicknames where it's just between you and yourself, you don't have to tell others unless you want to. Um, but when you give your skin tone a nickname, it's a term of endearment for yourself. It makes you feel more like in love with yourself. It makes you feel more peaceful with yourself. You're giving yourself an identity. You are taking back the power and giving it to you instead of focusing your identity externally. Instead of asking others, what color do you think I am? What body shape do you think I am? What what number on a scale of 1 to 10 do you think I am? No, instead of constantly giving external people the power, you take the ownership back over yourself. You take the CEO position in your own life and you get to decide, okay, what color do I call my skin tone and how am I going to market my skin tone or my skin tone nickname? Like if you're one of those people that calls your skin tone by a nickname in public, then yeah, you get to decide what color do I uh, find myself to be? What color do I feel the most comfortable calling myself? And how am I going to market myself out in the world? How am I going to navigate through society? Am I going to navigate through society as a caramel woman? Or do I feel like caramel is a little bit too, too broad of a term? Do I want to create my own name for my skin tone like rose gold? And it's kind of more descriptive. It describes my undertones. That's what I mean when I talk about using language to your advantage. Anyway, what qualities about yourself do you feel are special? What areas in life do you excel at? What areas in life do you surpass others at? What skills do you have that are superior to the skills of others in your field? Are you a better writer, a better singer, a better dancer, a better mom, a better cook? What skills do you have that make you stand out in your field? And how are you going to utilize the negative qualities about yourself, quote unquote negative, how are you going to use those qualities and turn them into something positive? So for example, I have also been called aggressive in the past. I actually do believe that I can be quite aggressive, but I know how to use my aggression to get me to my goals. Like I use a lot of aggression um, on this YouTube channel, like with my language with my output, like making so many videos or whatever, that is a way that I've learned to use a quote unquote negative quality, but I use it to my advantage, aggression. How are you gonna use your negative qualities in a positive way? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.